then becomes a very critical part of the NRLM strategy. So we are looking at partnering with uh, non-governmental organizations who have actually pioneered this approach of bringing the poor people together in order that they come out of poverty. So partnerships with NGOs will be very important and uh, they, they will help us to reach out to all the poor and also do it uh, in a reasonable period of time. We also would be, uh, would also be partnering with other government organizations who are providing services which are critical for the poor. So these government organizations currently are dealing with them through their line functionaries. But would like to change the relationship where government departments recognize the institutions of the poor, whether it's the village level or at the block level, as important partners. NRLM is a comprehensive uh, program for enabling poor people to come out of poverty. Hence, partnerships with key government departments who are providing services to the poor is very important. What we would like to do is work with these various uh, line departments and enable them to change their uh, way of working so that they are now working with institutions of the poor. So they have to change their uh, not only program but program delivery because the poor people's institutions themselves can do a number of things. So we are not just uh, asking them to implement the programs the way they have been used to implementing. We are saying that partnership with the institutions of the poor will have a very qualitative uh, impact, very positive qualitative impact on the way their program objectives are achieved. The Panchayati Raj institutions play a very critical role in the areas of uh, local self-governance. So we would like the Panchayati Raj institutions to create an atmosphere, to have a pro-poor atmosphere within the village. In their own plans of action, they should incorporate the requirements of the poor and they also work proactively in institution building, in capacity building, create a space, give space to the self-help groups of poor women. At the same time, the self-help groups of the women keep the panchayats informed about their activities. There, is, there should be a regular dialogue between the PRIs and the women self-help groups and other institutions of the poor that are formed in the village. So we are expecting a very healthy relationship where the panchayats play a supportive, nurturing role and at the same time the autonomy of the institutions of the poor to take decisions which affect their lives. So that autonomy is protected and the, the role of the Panchayati Raj institutions in terms of local self-governments is respected by the institutions of the poor. I think transparency and accountability will determine how well NRLM succeeds. In terms of accountability, the primary role in the program implementation is that of the institutions of the poor, which are SSGs at the grassroots level, their federations at village level and federations at block and district level. So we would like internal accountability first where in their own transactions there is complete transparency, members are aware of the money flows, the expenditure at various levels. So this is the first kind of accountability. But we would also like social audit where the general members of the public are also aware of what is happening. So social audit is another uh, uh, mechanism to 
ensure accountability of the project staff, the staff of the mission, of the bank managers, of the institutions of the poor. Uh, we also believe that we can use the information technology to help transmission of information fast and also make it simple for people to, in terms of fill up this information and analyze the information. So ICT technology itself will play a very important role in ensuring transparency. In terms of monitoring and evaluation, one important change that we are going to make is that we would like to know on an annual basis how lives of the poor are actually changing. So we'll have a large baseline study and this baseline uh, panel, a panel of households, we are looking at the numbers but could be around 200,000 to 300,000 households selected at random would be visited every year to understand how their lives have changed. So this is one important, uh, I would say, shift in the way programs are implemented. So this independent assessment of changes in people's lives is uh, an important feature of NRLM. Apart from that, we would have the regular uh, management information system which will also draw heavily on the ICT. We would like to introduce uh, e-fund management. So we are working on a ICT based uh, fund management system and where the, this is transaction based and also web based so that uh, the money flows are tracked and there is proper uh, accountability for the money spent. So we will have a ICT based uh, MIS systems. And we'll also build resource persons from within the community to do audit of uh, activities happening in other blocks, other districts, so that there is a peer group audit, which is not, uh, you know, it's not just some chart accountant going and doing the audit, but we'll also have this kind of uh, peer audits. There are also, I mean, in any case for all financial transactions, Chartered Accountants audit will be done, uh, but this will be in addition to that. And there will be process monitoring. Again, at random, there will be independent agencies hired to look at the processes, because NRLM is process intensive. It's not uh, giving some money and then, or it's not infrastructure, it is process intensive. So there will be process monitoring to understand what was visualized, whether it's happening or not. So these are the uh, multiple ways of uh, both monitoring and evaluation. At the central level, a national mission management unit is being set up with uh, experts from various sectors. And these experts would be compiling the best practices within the country so that this body of knowledge is available to the states who are starting afresh on this. So the pool of experts who are available at the National Mission Management Unit would be providing support to the state in several ways. In the first phase, States would like to know how state societies have to be set up or how a perspective plan has to be prepared, how a perspective plan would be appraised by the national level. So we will be supporting states which require this kind of support and sending team of experts there to facilitate this. We are also looking at spearhead teams who would be recruited at the centre and placed at the disposal of the state government to help them uh, in this transition 
from SGSY to NRLM. We will also be having teams of experts drawn from various states and also national resource agencies who would be visiting the states in a on a periodical basis to look at the rolling out of NRLM, implementation in the intensive phases and also to capture the best practices. Central level, a national mission management unit is, been, is being set up which will have uh, experts from various disciplines people who had experience in project implementation in the states. So this team will be providing technical support to the states based on requirements of the state. In the initial stages, states would require support in setting up of a society, in drafting the bylaws of the society, in um, policies for recruitment of the staff, what are the best practices in other states. So the first year for in the transition phase is going to be very important. So we, we expect that there will be a lot of demands from the state in uh, moving forward in this first year. The team of experts at the NRLM unit and drawing experts from the states would also be visiting states to oversee, to look at the implementation of NRLM, to look at the processes and also to look at emerging best practices. So this will then be a learning for the rest of the states. NRLM is a demand driven uh, program. So the states are expected to come up with their plans of action. So before the plans are approved, before the plans are approved by the Empowered Committee, teams from the National Mission Unit would go to the states for appraisal, for holding discussions with the states. So this will be uh, several roles which the National Mission Unit will be providing, uh, will be playing to provide technical support to the states. It will be demand driven if some states want support in a particular dimension, uh, NRLM will ensure that even if it, does, if it doesn't have expertise, it will source expertise to help a particular state. Since the core belief of NRLM is that poor people are extremely capable, so we expect that NRLM's main energy, main strength will come through the leaders thrown up by the poor. So leaders of the poor, leaders uh, in the sense of being best practitioners, being motivators, being uh, mentors. So this pool, the leaders from among the poor are going to lead this program. So we are going to invest heavily in identifying such leaders, building their, honing their skills and enabling them to become community trainers, become uh, mentors, become auditors, to play a variety of roles, which ensures that this program is uh, driven to the maximum extent by the poor themselves. Hence, the leadership of the poor and the role of leadership is extremely important which also throws a lot of responsibility on the implementing agencies to respect the poor, to respect the leaders among the poor and not treat them in a disdainful manner because they don't have formal educational qualifications. Uh, but I believe the leaders from among the poor are best educated in this sector because I believe they, they are equivalent to you know, PhDs in poverty eradication. So they themselves have come out of poverty. So they are the best ones to propagate the uh, NRLM ideals. My main message is that NRLM is one way a very daunting task, but it's also very easy.
all it requires is a shift in the mindset if we respect the capabilities of the poor we will find all the answers if not we will be groping for answers and the success of a success on a large scale of poverty eradication measures within the country shows that where poor people were respected poor people drove the program those programs could take off very quickly and with very little uh, expenditure and those were the most sustainable programs so i believe that it is within our reach and it is uh, highly doable we should not think it's uh, that poverty is going to stay with us forever if we want poverty to be eradicated abolished in a short period of time i believe that building institutions of the poor is the most important step that we would have taken in eradication of poverty